all right? You have a bear flag right here underneath this resistance line right here, all right? And any sort of downside move, we actually will have a small stopping point around 24,800, but really the big level is going to be in the 23,000 range. So 23,000 to 24,000. That's going to be your buy level for a bounce. Now, do I think that's the bottom? No. As of now, I'm undetermined. I still think we could go to new lows. I've stuck with that because again, and this is what drives me nuts. There are so many Bitcoiners out there that are these maxis and they're like, but Bitcoin rallied 100% off of the lows. Like it has to be a new bull market. And I'm like, dude, stop being doofuses. Like think back in 2018, Bitcoin rallied 200% off of the lows and then still went back to the lows of 3,500. Gareth Soloway has emerged as a prominent figure in the world of cryptocurrencies, leveraging his expertise and analytical skills to navigate the dynamic and rapidly evolving crypto market. Soloway believes that Bitcoin in a bear market can hit as low as $12,000. He adds that if Bitcoin establishes itself over $30,000, the market can escape the psychological lows from the bull market of 2021. The recent rise has come as somewhat of a surprise, even the closure of Silvergate Capital and Signature Bank, two of the biggest lenders to the crypto industry. As Soloway says, I do believe it becomes that asset in the future once we get regulation in there. But right now, that's not the case, even though it's showing glimpses of what it wants to become. The perennial debate of whether Bitcoin is a gold-like have an asset or a risky investment may heat up as the cryptocurrency's sensitivity to stock markets increases amid concerns the Federal Reserve's aggressive tightening plans may tip the U.S. economy into recession. Bitcoin 2023 attendees in Miami blame bear market vibes for lower attendance. But a steep decline in digital asset prices and a wave of crypto-native blowups has dampened attendance. The conference organizers expect to see 15,000 attendees at what they call the world's largest Bitcoin gathering. Crypto's correlation with traditional markets rose to new highs as central banks globally jacked up interest rates at the fastest pace in decades to combat rampant inflation. The monetary hawkishness knocked down the price of rate-sensitive, risky assets such as stocks and cryptocurrencies. Before proceeding further in this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button below for more recent updates about crypto market. And honestly, I was bearish on Bitcoin before, I'm actually more bearish now, and I'm gonna explain why. So number one, I've been talking about, first of all, let's go back about three, four weeks. When we were at 30,500, I came on this, this stream, I came on the game plan and I said, guys, unless you get above this and hold above 30,500, this is a dead short, this is a bear market rally. All right, what happened? We pulled back. We pulled back to this level on the charts right here. We then bounced, we pulled back, we bounced. We then broke and look at the bear flag we're making. Now, this is my problem. There's a couple things that I want to mention about Bitcoin. Number one, all right, I went to Bitcoin Miami. Attendance was down 43% at Bitcoin Miami. All right, this is one of the biggest events of the year for Bitcoin and crypto. And attendance was almost half of what it was the previous year. Now, is it partially that we're in a bear market? Well, maybe, but if you look back at when Bitcoin Miami was last year, price was only around 30,000 last year. So we were already well in a bear market, but there was, again, a huge amount of people. So it, you can't really blame it on the bear market. So the next thing that you would do is say, okay, well, is it the economy? And the answer is yes, it's probably partially the economy. Money is tighter for people. Inflation has taken a bite out of their disposable income. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that could be a factor. But I also think one of the un unthought of factors is that there's not as much excitement in crypto. And that's an issue. Crypto needs to have the excitement level. Now, if you go in, in, in our bubbles, the Twitter bubble, the Instagram bubble, you, of course you're going to have excitement, right? I mean, you're, you're going to a specific area. But the fact that the government is holding back regulation is very, very problematic. And to me, that's a negative. Now, again, is it saying that we couldn't have a bottom at 15,700? No, of course you could. Of course you could. But let the charts guide you. The 30,500 level is a level that I went on and I said, this is the Great Wall of China level. This is like the level where, you know, this is the end all be all level. And we didn't get through it. So you have to, what's that telling us? I mean, just simply put, what's that telling us? So understand that guys, you got to understand that. The other thing I'll say on Bitcoin that I don't like about crypto right now is that crypto has no identity. It, it lost any form of identity over the last couple months. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. The banking crisis hit. We saw banks collapsing, SV, SVB collapsed, Silicon Valley Bank. Um, and what did Bitcoin do? It shot up. Well, guess what? A month later, Bitcoin, some banks collapsed again. 
All right, we saw WAL, Western Alliance, dropping 50%. PacWest dropping like 75%. Bitcoin went down. So Bitcoin goes up when some of the banks collapse, but then when others collapse, it goes down. Hmm. Well, that's not an identity. It's not telling us something. Okay, well, let's take another one. Let's talk about how Bitcoin right now, markets go up some days and Bitcoin goes up. Other days, markets go up and Bitcoin goes down. All right, well, now you got to say to yourself, wait, so is it a risk asset or is it a safety hedge? Is it the digital gold or is it a risk on play? And it's going up and down on both of them. There's no identity here. And when there's no identity in something, that to me is concerning. You need to have, like an investor has to have a thesis. What the heck is the thesis? I don't even know right now. Amidst the chatter surrounding CBDCs and their potential impact on the market, Gareth will explore how governments plan to introduce CBDCs subtly. According to a report from the Chinese media outlet Securities Times, eligible investors can now use the digital yuan to buy off-site financial products such as public funds. FET now is set to launch in July, what the instant payment service could mean for a digital dollar and stable coins. It's a shift in focus that brings the stock market narrative closer to that of Bitcoin which has long been viewed by many investors as a potential hedge against fast-rising prices or a depreciating U.S. dollar. Crypto Crash Bitcoin falls to $26,100 as investors weigh debt ceiling, latest FOMC minutes. Is $20,000 or $30,000 next? Bitcoin remains range-bound and should continue to consolidate near the lower boundaries of its downward-sloping trading range with the $25,000 level providing massive support. I, now, I do think longer term, and let's be clear, Longer term, I'm a big fan of the bull case. I think it does grow into its identity. I think it is the digital gold. But you know what's happening right now, guys? The government is stifling it. And they're doing it on purpose. I want to be 100% crystal clear. All right, look up this. All right, so we, we obviously know, and, and I'm going to just repeat this. I've said this before, but this is one of the most important things you'll hear on crypto. And it's fascinating. All right, so basically what you have in this situation is the government is doing a China play playbook. And what I mean by that is China, remember, China came out and banned Bitcoin. After they banned Bitcoin, what did they do? They released the digital yuan. Why did they do that? Well, they didn't want competition for the digital yuan. They wanted the digital yuan to gain traction in their economy. And therefore, it's, it doesn't, then once the big players are using the digital yuan, Bitcoin is not as much of a threat. Well, guess what's happened? Now they're starting to loosen the, that regulatory control and that ban on Bitcoin because the digital yuan has, has the power. It's now embedded in the Chinese economy. Basically, look up FedNow. FedNow is a direct payment system that's going to be launching in literally weeks, I believe. And again, you can literally, it'll basically be a Cash App equivalent or a Venmo equivalent. And it's the beginning of the introduction of the CBDC. And the idea here is very simple. It's the government is not releasing regulation because once regulation comes out, check this out. Once regulation comes out, then the institutions will get involved. Once the institutions put billions and trillions of dollars into crypto, you can't undo that. So as long as they don't release this information, you know what's going to happen? then the big money sitting on the sidelines, heck, I'm not even willing to invest that much without knowing the rules in crypto. And they're waiting for FedNow to launch, the CBD to launch, the CBDC to launch. And then once that occurs, then you will get regulation. I would almost guarantee within weeks of this occurring, you will get regulatory framework in crypto. And by the way, one other thing, going to politicians, and I'm not a political dude right here. I mean, I just want to say this, but... If you look at, I was at Bitcoin Miami, we had a presidential candidate speaking there. You know, uh, there was a presidential candidate yesterday on, on um, Twitter that announced they're all trying to be like, oh, I'm pro Bitcoin, I'm pro Bitcoin. Okay, I like that. I'm a fan of that. Good. But you know what? Maybe me, I'm just cynical, but I want to see if they get elected if they still are. And I think it's, it's a one way to guarantee votes and they know that. I want to know that when they get elected, if they get elected, they're still behind it. And that's my skepticism. So again, yes, it's great to hear. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, get, let's get on to some other things here. I want to show you a couple charts here. All right, this next chart that I'm going to show you is going to show you how Bitcoin tops before the stock market. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to bring up one of these charts here. 
Take a look at this. This is your 2017 top on Bitcoin, okay? 2017 top was December 17th of 2017. Four to six weeks later, the S&P topped. Four to six weeks later. All right, next chart. Let's go to the next one. Boom. Here we have November 10th, 2021, Bitcoin tops. January 4th, four to six weeks later, the S&P tops. Okay, and we know what happened to the S&P down 20 plus percent after that offense. Obviously, we bounced back. But again, that's something to keep an eye on. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because what we see historically is that Bitcoin tops before the S&P. If this is correct, what it means is we are very close to an S&P top in the markets. Because again, about four weeks ago, you had Bitcoin topping at 30500 Okay, That means that four to six weeks later, if this trend follows we should see the US stock markets turn down. We're now at four plus weeks. So basically over the next two weeks, look for a top on the chart of the S&P 500. Reiterating his previous analysis that Bitcoin could be in the early stages of a bull market, Bitfinex added, despite the current market downturn, long-term Bitcoin holders remain undeterred. The increasing trend of long-term holding coupled with the rise of whole coiners and the benefit to miners from increased transaction fees paints a picture of a resilient Bitcoin ecosystem. Bitcoin price could reach $45,000 due to rising gold price, says JP Morgan. The upcoming Bitcoin halving in April or May 2024 would mechanically double Bitcoin's production cost to around $40,000, according to JP Morgan. This is because Bitcoin's production cost has historically acted as an effective lower bound, JP Morgan strategists said. That's all about today analysis. Do you agree with Gareth Soloway's perspective about Bitcoin performance during stock market rally and bank's collapse? Will it move above $30,000 level? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this information helpful, then like this video and subscribe to our channel. We will bring you more updates in the future.